They follow Christ because they are filled. As long as they're being blessed financially, as long as they have the car or the wife or the children that they wanted or the financial success or the health that they want, they'll follow Jesus. And that's what these people were doing. They were following Jesus simply because their bellies were filled. Do not labor for the food that perishes, Jesus says, but that labor for that food which endures to everlasting life. Labor for that food. What did Jesus say? This is the work of God that you believe on Him. So how do you labor for the food that endures to everlasting life? You believe on Him. Which the Son of Man will give you, for God the Father has sealed Him. They said to him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said, This is the work of God, that you believe on him whom he has sent. So we understand that faith is a gift of God. Love believes all things. The fruit of the Spirit is faith. Okay? Again, it's the fruit of the Spirit. It's the gift of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives the fruit of faith. Thirdly, faith is not disbelieving something just because you do not want it to be true. Okay? And there are a lot of people that don't believe something simply because they don't want it to be true. But, nevertheless, the scripture will say certain things, people will see the scriptures, profess to be a believer in Jesus Christ, and yet totally uh, disbelieve the very scriptures he has given us to teach us more about himself. Therefore they said to them, said to him, What sign do you show us then, so that we may see you? What do you work? Our fathers ate manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, Moses did not give you that bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Then they said to him, Lord, give us this bread. And Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger. He who believes on me shall never thirst. Look what Christ did. He just destroyed their concept of the kingdom. They wanted a kingdom that filled their bellies. They wanted a kingdom that satisfied all of their physical passions and desires. Jesus says, I am the bread of heaven. How disheartening. He took the wind out of their sails. He took the wind out of the sails of their every hope that Messiah would come and conquer the Roman Empire and give them all the food they wanted, whose God was their belly and whose glory was their shame, Paul says in Philippians. Their God is their belly and their glory, that is their self-righteousness, is their shame. That's the only glory they have. And God says, your self-righteousness is as filthy rags. Their glory in the sight of God, their works are filthy rags. And their God is their belly, or their own evil passions. That's the desire of the self-righteous we're dealing with here. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger. He who believes on me shall never thirst. But I say to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe. He was talking to the very people whose bellies he filled. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will never cast out. The promise of God. For I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of the Father who sent me, that of all which he has given me I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes on him should have everlasting life. And I will raise him up at the last day. Then the Jews murmured about him because he said, I am the bread which comes down from heaven. And they said, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, Joseph whose father and mother we know? How does this one say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus therefore answered and said to them, Do not murmur with one another. No one can come to me unless the Father who has sent me drag him, and I will raise him up at the last day. 
as it is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught of God. If you have come to Jesus, it's because the Father has dragged you to him. And that is the sign that you have been taught of God. Therefore, everyone who hears and learns from the Father comes to me. It's a guarantee. If you've learned from the Father, you come to Jesus. Why? Because the Father, by the power of the Holy Spirit, convicts our heart of our own self-righteousness and causes us to believe on Him and embrace the cross, something we would never do of our own will. Not anyone, not that anyone has seen the Father, except He who is from God, He has seen the Father, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes on me has everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate manna in the wilderness and died. This is the bread which comes down from heaven so that a man may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats this bread, he shall live forever. And truly, the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Then the Jews argued with one another, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life in yourselves. Now think about that. Jesus knows their thoughts. He knows the very question they're asking. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? And Jesus takes it even further and says, You've got to eat my flesh and drink my blood. It's as if Jesus wants to drive them further into their unbelief. You see, by using this type of language, which will perplex them. As the disciples said, Why do you speak to us in parables? Jesus answered and said, Because to you it has been given to understand the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. To them it has not been given. Whoever partakes of my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who partakes of my flesh and drinks my blood dwells in me and I in him. You see, all Jesus was saying is he's, he was using these metaphors to tell us about what faith in him is.